Hey everybody, welcome, it's Borino. Welcome to another Rockstar interview. This is a special exclusive edition for you guys who are my listing university students. Welcome to the worldwide marketing headquarters of the Casa de Borino uh, from Washington DC from Northern Virginia. I have a really cool interview today for you guys. Uh, occasionally I find an agent who is, in my opinion, a true rock star, not just in terms of doing something unusual and getting great results, but having the good spirit of being willing to share with you guys, to inspire you, to teach you, to show you what's working right now. And uh, Mike is that guy. So with that, Mike, welcome very much to the Listing University Rockstar interview. We just jump on Skype and we're going to chat and share some cool stuff. Welcome, Mike. Thanks very much for accepting the invitation. Uh, no problem. Thanks for having me. I love it. Awesome. Mike, uh, real quick, just some a little bit of a background so that people have an idea of who you are, what you do, where you sell real estate. What area do you work right now? All right, I'm working in O'Fallon, Missouri. It's a suburb of St. Louis. Uh, I started in real estate 1977. Oh, wow. So you've been at it quite some time. Yeah, that's before you guys were all born. <laughs> Let's see. I got my uh, agent license when it was October, and then I turned right around and got my broker's license in December. Uh -huh. uh, but I was really selling real estate before that. It started... 11 years old, I started, uh, 10 or 11, I started cutting grass for my dad, who was a real estate agent, and then uh -huh. bought the builder out. And then I worked up to being, I worked up to being a laborer, and um, ended up working in the office, and then selling houses. So I've been doing this forever. Now, I did take a little break, and tried to sell some, something else mm -hmm. while I was doing this part-time, and well, that didn't work out, so quickly right back into it full-time. Nice. So yeah. you've seen all kinds of cycles, all kinds of crazy markets. You've seen the good, bad, the awesome, and the dramatic of real estate, right? You remember still the MLS books, right? Oh, you and I, I go remember way the back. MLS books, having to go to the office to get the keys. I remember driving forever to show two houses. You go to one office, you get a key. They want it back by two o'clock. <laughs> yeah. You got to get it back. Oh yeah, I remember that. I remember the, whew, the interest rates. Yeah, yeah. Business has world. changed quite a bit. A few few things have changed since then, haven't they? Oh my goodness, yes, yeah. yes. Now it it seems like it's hard, but it's not. It's actually a lot easier than it was back then. Yeah, yeah. It, in many ways, I agree. Yeah. But you have to keep up with the times, which is one of the reasons I was so inspired and so impressed by the way you do business is that given the arc of where you started and where you are today, you using some pretty cutting edge tools, and we're going to get to it in just a moment of the stuff you use and how you generate business and some of the resources that folks who are our subscribers can, can utilize. So I, I really like that. I think that's that's admirable many agents still stuck in a certain mentality or a certain model of doing business but you seem to stay very flexible and very abreast of what's going on I try how do you do that how do you stay informed how do you keep keep track of what's worth investing because I mean we, we all get these emails right oh the brand new oh. gadget the latest gizmo the 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 cutting edge stuff you know I, I see these emails as well how do you stay on top of all that what's worth investing or looking into how do you do that uh, well it's interesting because I I try a little of everything from everybody. Mm -hmm. I all these things from I don't want to name any name, but these different things that come across, you know, eight dollars for this, thirteen dollars for that. I go ahead and buy them and take a look at them, and if they're any good, well, then I that guy stays on my my good list, and I'll keep looking at stuff from him. Yeah, but I've tried um, everything from uh, Roger Butcher. Ferry, Craig Proctor, I've tried all of the stuff. And not that I wanted to change what I do because I'm kind of an odd duck or a weird weasel and that I just love real estate. I live it. I breathe it. It, it is my passion. So I want to get better all the time. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking little bits and pieces from everybody. And I started realizing, oh, gosh, four or five years ago that the guy looking back at me in the mirror isn't the same guy that I think's looking in the mirror. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting a little bit older. So to stay abreast of what's going on in technology, I like to play with it, but I'm not good at it. Mm -hmm. So I hired a young guy. I hired a guy in his 30s, and his job is keep me up on technology. I mean, not only do it, but 
teach me, mm. get me going. As you can see from the start of this video, uh, I knew what Skype was. I knew how to get on, but I we had some issues and <laughs> I got them fixed and got it going. But we are here, so it's working. <laughs> that's right. My IT guy keeps me up on a lot of the stuff. Nice. I find these video programs that come. I just click on it and send it to him and say, is this a good one? Is this not a good one? But gleaning, that's the whole idea. Yeah. Check, never stop learning. Yeah. Excellent. So the first tip, don't stop learning. It never ends. It, you will never reach a point where you know it, you mastered it, and you're good to go. You will reach a point where it's paying off and you're doing well. But in terms of improving yourself, you keep working on yourself. That's awesome. Mike, just for, for, for the sake of kind of calibrating where you are, uh, how was your last year in terms of listings taken, production? Give, give folks an idea where you are. Um, got that right here. Last year, I listed 70 houses. I sold 63. Good. So that wasn't my best year. My best year, I, I sold 202. <laughs> and, um, but... <sighs> What I do is I keep track of all my numbers. Okay. And last year, the average days on market in the area was 147. And I was able to get mine sold in 63. And when I go on a call, I get about eight. Well, last year, I got 88% of every listing I went on, I got. But I also turned down about 6 to 7% of okay. those listings. Didn't want them, didn't need them. Yeah. They would be a pain. All right. Well, let's start here, Mike. I mean, we didn't really script or prepare this interview other than right. Mike and I discussed briefly what points I wanted to cover and what I want to share with you guys, or what Mike actually was going to share with you is some lead generation systems he's using right now that work pretty well. And for someone who's doing 70 listings a year, you can tell that he's doing something right. But uh, maybe we can start here. Um, Let's say I'm an agent who's doing about 80000 maybe $100,000 a year. A few deals, they know how to take a listing, they know how to sell a property. But they say, I want to, I want to take it up a notch. I want to do better. Or I want to go from 50 to 150. I want to reach that level where bills are paid and I'm driving a nice car and living in a nice home. What would be maybe three, four, maybe five things that they need to focus on in the next 12 months, in your opinion, to reach that level quickly? What would you suggest to them? If they, let's say you're their mentor, you're their coach. And somebody comes to you and says, Mike, I need your help. What should I work on first, second, third, fourth? What would you tell them? Well, the first thing you have to do is you've got to have a constant lead source. You've got to find a way to always having, have leads coming in. Um, I like expireds. They're, they've always got their hand up. They want to sell. They just have had problems. Fizbos, the same thing. But if Fizbos are a little bit different because they're, a, they're hard. A lot of them, the, they're unreasonable. Um, and your sphere of influence, you can't neglect it. It has to be number one on your, on your list. You've got to keep up with people. And the website, you've got to be on the web looking. You've got to have a presence somewhere. And then those are, the, those are the four main things that I do. I work expireds really hard, FISBOs a little bit, try to get with an SOI every day. And my website, I let my young techie make sure that, that brings me in leads also but that's part of it then you've got to do something with those leads and what i do is i've got a whole series of letters that i send out yeah i know it's snail mail but it works if you if you make the envelope look right and the letter be appealing if it gets open it will jump out at them and but you've got to follow that up too you follow that up with a phone call if you can get their phone number. Now, I use Spokio quite a bit. Um, and then postcards. I alternate letters and postcards. I've got a series of 18 that I send out. It's a letter, it's a postcard, it's a letter, it's a call. It's a, it, it just goes on and on and on. And this is a follow-up sequence to the existing yeah. leads you generate through your funnels, right? Yes, yes. Okay. After, after the first call, I cut them off. So you've got to cut them off. And then you've got to go, I send email, I, emails also, if I can. If I can't get a hold of them, I send an email. And um, you just have to stay on top of your database. Okay. Changing so people out. You generate leads using expired, using majority of the system is the expired plus. You've come on board a few months ago, right? Sure. You're using that. Uh, some of them are for sale by owners, sphere of influence, and your website. Would you say those are the four main funnels you have? 
Most definitely. Okay. Yes. And then once the leads are generated, you have a sequence of direct mail pieces and combined with emails and phone calls if you have that contact information to keep in touch with these folks. Am I getting it right? You are right. Awesome. But the next thing is consistency. You can't miss. You've got to be consistent. Many of the people that I visit and talk to say, after about two, three weeks, people stop sending them mail. Mm. Interesting. So other agents don't really have a library like you do. They no. don't have the system in place with the sequence. How often, let's say I'm a seller. I okay. come to your website. I found you on the web. How do people usually find you on the web? Are these the seller leads, buyer leads? How do you attract them to your website? Well, the homes that I list, the homes that I list, we put them everywhere. I've got them out on two, three, four hundred different websites, but I, I'm advertising them in such a way that, well, besides the websites, we're going to put them on over a hundred YouTube videos, make a bunch of them uh, private, but four or five of them will be public where they can be seen. So the SEO crawlers still, I mean, the website, the uh, Google and Bing, they're all crawlers. They find everything. So these homes go up number one on Google, Yahoo, Bing on the first page. We three or four different um, spots on the first page. Mm -hmm. Then we run a bunch of generic ads that are out there also. And all these ads change every 48 hours. So it's new and fresh. Mm -hmm. And it's um, people find me that way. I mean, last month I had 23,700 hits on my website. Ooh. But they're going to hit it. They're going to look at it. But we've also got a piece of technology that turns around and gives me their IP address, which turns around and gives me their name, their address, and sometimes their phone numbers. Hmm. So I can reverse market to as many as I want to. Oh, that's outstanding. So Mike, you mentioned a lot of this is done by your IT expert. Do you have a guy who is obviously a techie and who knows how to do all this? I yes. can't imagine you would spend too much time fiddling around with this, right? <laughs> no way. How, no would, way. how would an agent go about finding someone and can they afford someone like that? Uh, you know, there are a lot of kids that are graduating from high school and graduating uh, from college that don't have jobs. I've got a neighbor right across the street. He is an IT guy that works from home. They all know each other, and or a lot of them do, and they refer people back and forth. An agent can get somebody part-time just to do some basic stuff mm -hmm. very inexpensively, and then they can also outsource that to um, the Philippines or wherever so they can afford it. The IT people in the Philippines are working for $1.50, $2 an hour. Hmm. So that's pretty good. So if you roll up your sleeves and keep looking, I'm sure sooner or later you will be able to find someone who can help you with this kind of stuff, right? Most definitely. I got, a, I got another agent that went to a, um, a junior college, talked to the IT department there, the professors, and they found some projects for the kids to do. Hmm. and. They got it for free. Yeah. How much do you personally, how much time per day, let's say, do you personally spend working the technology part of your business? Uh, probably 15 or 20 minutes. Okay, so not a whole lot. Most of it is no. just give direction and have somebody else do it. You got it. Now, pay attention, guys. This guy is doing 70 plus listings, up to 200 transactions, 200 listings a year. He's doing something right. If you spend a lot of time fucking around with Facebook, uh, Craigslist, and all this stuff yourself. If you do the job of an assistant, you're getting paid as an assistant. Mm -hmm. Don't get stuck on these technical details. You don't have the time or resources, or you shouldn't have the desire to really become a master of this. You need to understand it. You need to know how it benefits you and your business and your customers. But beyond that, you need to be able to get somebody who really knows this intimately and is doing it for a living, pay them a few dollars an hour, and have them run with it. Would you agree with that, Mike? Is that your model? Most definitely. But that's if you really want to go hog wild with it. Mm -hmm. You can get somebody, like let's say from the colleges, to help you a little bit. And all you've got to do is offer them something. Yeah. Um, and they will help. They will do whatever they can do. In other right. words, there's plenty of resources around you if you just look. There, there are oh. people out there. Awesome. Well, let's yes. go back for a second, if you don't mind, uh, talk about the lead generation modules. We talked about the technology. You mentioned the Fizzbos and Sphere. Uh, the expires do follow the formula of the expired plus. You try to reach them on the phone if you can. Then you start mailing them and, and you visit them. Is that the three-prong approach I teach? Well, you know, 
somewhat. Okay. Um, what I do first is I send a letter first. It, well, let me back up even further than that. I am doing more of the land voice old expired, not totally, but the older ones because okay. there's, no, there's no competition. And what I can do with this, I send them a letter and then two or three days later, depending on how antsy I am, I turn around and call them. And, and is I the use, letter along the lines of your home expired? If you still want to sell, let's talk. Is that something like yes, that? Yes, okay. exactly. It's more of the curiosity uh, part of, of your uh, 4.0. Okay. It's the curiosity one that I use, kind of yeah. play a little bit of Columbo to start with and then get a little more techie to where they're sitting there with the jaws open like, huh? Yeah, come on by. But um, I, do not, I do not do the door knocking. Because around here, where, where I am, every night there is somebody knocking on the door to cut your grass, fertilize, pest control, mm -hmm. home remodeling, and I don't want to be in their category. So I set the appointment and then um, uh, go from there. I am a little bit different than a lot of people in that the expired listings that I get, I'll get 40 or 50 a day. So I can glean the ones that I want and the ones that will talk to me. Now, out of those 40 or 50, how many do you think would end up as a listing? Um, well, a lot of that depends on how many I want to call on. Okay. If I, if I um, mute my phone there, <laughs> if I um, pick eight or 10, I will probably get pretty close to 85, 90% every time nice I, I really cherry pick yeah. I cherry pick and then the ones I don't want I've set up a referral source where I give the leads to other agents hmm. around in different different companies so even if you don't list them somebody else lists them you can still make some money still get a referral fee oh, that's a good strategy I like that so yeah. let's say I'm a, I'm, I'm a lead you made a contact with me and I said, you know what, Mike, uh, we have a couple of things we want to repair at the house. Then we're going on vacation with the kids. Why don't you call us back in three months? What will happen then? Well, then they engage my competitive juices to say, nope, we're going to get this thing listed before you go. Okay. And it, it's talk about the market, the good houses that are on the market that are selling fast and the low inventory of, of nice homes. It turns around and they, um, I would say, they all list. They all list, pretty much. It, so it, when they say something like that, it's not necessarily that their time schedule, it's more of a, there's they're, they're, they're still not enough trust and they're, they're still afraid to make the move. Is that is that? Yeah, right that's, that's, pr that's pretty accurate. But you've just got to educate them and you've got to identify with them. Hmm. If you identify with them and educate them, then they're on your side. Yeah. yeah. So now you take a listing. Yes. What things do you do to get your listing sold in what, half the time it normally takes in your area? Would you say you, you cut it about half to oh, what your yeah. competition usually takes? Uh-huh. Yep. So what are some of the things that really work for you to market your listings? Well, <laughs> first thing we do is, I hope you got all day, first thing you do is <laughs> We get the pictures, we get the thing in the MLS, and then do I you take, back. sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but do you take the pictures or do you have a photographer? Uh, usually I take the, the pictures. Okay. Got a real nice camera and I've learned pretty much what shots to take and what which ones not to take. And okay. yeah, I'm a little different. I bring the, um, the cowboy lights if I need them and, you know, set up the whole thing. Uh, or I'll send somebody else out to do them depending on how busy I am. Mm -hmm. But if I want to get it going quickly, I just take them. So I take them, I get everything back to the office, I download the pictures into a file and I send them to my IT guy. He will then take the pictures, we'll put them in the MLS, we'll put them on Real Bird, Agent Machine. Um, the, then he goes, crazy with it all. He starts making the videos and we put them everything from the YouTube to the slide share to all the, the social marketing. 
he goes crazy. We're finding that military.com is all of a sudden working pretty good and walmart.com, things that people just don't even think about. Yeah, that's where you promote your listings. Now, when you say you do the videos, this is a slideshow of the property, the photos that you put together yes, in the video? Yes, because that works better. If you do the, um, it, well, I found that if I do the same thing everybody else does, I'm not, I, I'm not separating myself. So I'm gonna take the videos um, with well, I'm gonna take the video first of all with it with my camera. I'll take a video um, that doesn't work real good, but I take pictures and we make the slideshow in the videos. Some you know sometimes we use a little program like Animoto. Sometimes mm -hmm. I use Camtasia, mm -hmm. or you can have me going from room to room to room talking when I'm not really there. Um, but the main thing is if you do the pictures, you can rotate the pictures and then you can pull them out and just mark it. When people are looking online, they look online and they see reasons to say no to a house and they move on to the next one. So why don't you try marketing just the kitchen or market just the finished garage with all the racking and all that kind of stuff or just the finished basement. Market just pieces of it and then change it every so often so that they don't have a reason to say no. Ah, pay attention, you guys. I hope you're taking notes because this this is stuff that Mike really does right now. This is really working for him. Watch how he sells. Half is how it takes him half the time to get his listing sold. He takes pictures of the property, then he puts together stitches together different videos. By the way, on YouTube right now, for those of you guys who are wondering, Camtasia and Animoto, don't have to worry about that. You just load up the pictures straight on YouTube and build the video with music right there. You can do it there even if you're on a tight deadline or, or it's super tight budget. So watch what he does. He puts together a variation for each property and promotes it differently to attract different kind of buyer, to saturate the search engines, to get more visibility, get more hits, get more views, and obviously make more money. Am, am, I, am I understanding right the process, Mike? Is that what you're doing? Right on target. Some of them you include the price, some of them you don't. And you just kind of got a feel with what your market's looking for. And you I don't need thousands and thousands of views. All you're looking for is a handful of really good views from the motivated buyers to move the property. That's correct. Do you double end a lot of your own listings, Mike? 30%. Ooh, nice. Nice. Yes. 30%. Three uh, out of 10 double end. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's, I've, I found many times that when you go on a listing and it expired, they say, well, the other agent never even showed it. He didn't do anything. And it's like, well, I sell 30% of my own. And with that, eyebrows go up. But a lot of that's because of the marketing. Their house is out there everywhere. So people are calling me directly rather than trying to get an agent. Sometimes they even have an agent, a buyer's agent, and they call me direct. And I still work something out with the buyer's agent. Yeah. But um, it is... It's, it's kind of fun doing the double ends. Oh, that's all. Awesome. And you have, co it's a good deal. I mean, say what you will about dual agency and representation, but if you as a very comp competent, good agent can put the whole deal together, represent both sides, everybody wins. There is no downside to this as far as I'm concerned. And you deserve the extra money. So that's awesome. And you control the transaction. You don't have to deal with some incompetent idiot on the other side who drops the ball and doesn't get the paperwork signed on time and God knows what else. Yeah, all these part-time, right. all, all the part-time agents that sell one or two houses to their friends. Well, that's the thing. A lot of buyers' agents are buyers' agents because they're not competent enough yet to be full-time agents taking good listings. So you got to deal with that stuff. So now, in addition to the videos, doing real bird and promoting, what else do you do to attract good buyers or agents? How do you attract agents with good buyers to get your listing sold? Well, with that, I, I do a little spiff with them. I jack up the buyer commission just a little bit. And they all know that if they sell my listings, they're going to get more than the around here. There's a, it's pretty typical. I got to phrase this right, I guess, for the <laughs> MREC. It's very typical to find a certain percentage going to buyer's agents all the time. Well, I up that a little bit. Does they come out of your cuts? Do you lower your commission to, to adjust that? Or how does that work? Well, I don't want to lose any money. Yeah. No. What I do is I, I mentioned it in the listing presentation that in order to get uh, your house seen by more agents, what you need to do is offer a little bit more. So we offer a little bit higher on the commission end, and I throw that piece to the 
um, the buyer's agent. Nice. And most sellers have no problem with they clearly see the benefit and go for it. Oh, most definitely, especially after their house has expired. Uh -huh. Now, Fizbos don't. Fizbos are they're in a world of their own. They're a different animal, yeah. Yes, they want they want you to work for four percent, five percent, whatever it is. Do you cut your commissions, about. Mike? Do you ever do that? Do I ever do what? Do you ever cut your commission if if the seller says, Mike, will you take four percent? Will you list our house for four percent? Absolutely not. I don't ever list it. I mean, I don't ever uh, reduce it. I do more than any other agent around to get the house sold. I sell it faster. Why would I want to take a hit? Yeah. And Is there anything uh, else you would suggest that agents can do these days to uh, get their listing sold? I mean, it's a pretty hot market, so it doesn't take a, a months and months of hard work. If you price it right and do a few marketing steps, it's, it should be pretty easy. Well, you know, it, it's a hot market everywhere but here. Mm. We're the dead center of the country, and it doesn't quite, it's not working that way here. Um, uh, where did I put that? I've got a market update for St. Louis. We are down 10% over last year, mm. and last year is pretty tough. In, in terms of DOM, days on the market? No, in terms of deals sold. Oh, so the number of transactions. transactions ah. We are down 10%. Let me point something out to you guys, something you've heard me talk about before, and something that's vital. We've been talking with Mike for what, about 20, 30 minutes right now. He shared a lot of great information, but notice one thing. You can clearly see that Mike is an expert. He's a real estate authority. He doesn't have to sell himself. He doesn't have to state it, doesn't have to promote it or advertise it. But notice that as I'm asking him questions, he knows the market stats, he knows what's going on in the market precisely, he knows the exact information that every authority, every expert should know. You need to do the same thing, you need to do your homework, you need to stay on top of your market. Because just like I'm asking these questions, I guarantee you these come up, Mike, you'll probably confirm it, with the sellers. That's how they know that you're an expert, that you're somebody who knows what they're doing and that you could be trusted. Do you agree with that, Mike? Oh, most definitely, most definitely. I. My wife says that quite often I am so con I'm on I'm on the borderline of confident and arrogant, <laughs> and you've got to learn what what card to play when to play it. A, a lot of the set sellers, if you're going to them and you are identifying with them, feeling their pain, pushing them a little bit, educating them about the process, and then a little bit harder. You're going to put put it on the market, and if they if they rebuff a little bit, then that's when my um, my competitive juices come in, and it's like, okay, this is my problem. I start talking too much. I start throwing out statistics and different ways to make something happen, and then I tell them your line that says, well, maybe you need to just stay off the market and keep your house and live in the same neighborhood with the same neighbors and the same house and all this stuff. And I try to leave, and they don't want me to leave. <laughs> nice. And then my commission goes up another quarter percent. <laughs> no, not really. But, you know, if you are confident and you can come across with statistics, whether they are the statistics are for that subdivision, for that community, for the big county, it doesn't matter. If you show that you know you're an, you're an expert on something, mm -hmm. they are going to jump on you. Yes. And again, you don't have to push it, you don't have to shove it down their throat. It comes clearly through during the conversation you have with the seller. That's awesome. It, exactly. Very cool. Exactly. Now, Mike, uh, many of these folks, many of you guys who are watching this interview uh, with Mike are sitting there uh, learning this stuff and you've become my, my students and you've become my clients because you want to do better, you want to have more leads, more appointments, more listings, more commissions, obviously, better lifestyle, good clients, peace of mind, and enjoy the business and enjoy the fruits of your labor. What are maybe a couple of things that you would share that you think would help these folks to, to get to that point? Because you're obviously enjoying the business, you're making good money, you do a great job for your clients, you get a lot of referrals as a result. How do they reach that point as well? What would you share with them? Have fun. Hmm. Have fun. Um, you got to start small. Start small and do. When I first, 
I don't know how to even begin with this. When I first started learning that I needed to learn more, I started in and I jumped on every every possible program that was out there and I started all this stuff and I had my desk full of this stuff and I was so busy learning what I already knew or refreshing myself that I wasn't getting the business. Hmm. So it's pick something and do that. When you have that going, move on to something else. So when you say pick something, would it be something like figure out how to convert for sale by owners into listing appointments? Figure out the process. Right. Is that what you're referring to? Yes. Find something that you want to, that you need to improve on. I picked everything and I tried to do it all at once. Doesn't work. I, right now, I am improving my expireds by using your system. And it's also helping me with FISBOs mm -hmm. and with SOIs. You've got to learn to adapt it to send it everywhere. But if you're getting out there, figure out first what you need to do. Are you good at listing or are you good at selling? Which one are you? Well, pick up your presentation. Practice your presentation. Get that down pat and try to calculate everything. My, my, my presentation is 15 minutes or 18 minutes or 45 minutes. You got to get it to where it's comfortable. When you've got that done, then you've got the house. But what are you going to do with the house? You got to do something with it. So figure out what you need to do to get the house sold and then start working on that. And then before too long, you can do two at a time, three at a time, five at a time. And when you get to that point, you've got to hire somebody to help you. Yeah. And But the main thing is you need to be working on your leads about 60% of the time. Ah, so more than half of the time you spent working should yes. be focused on lead generation. Most definitely. That is, if you don't have the leads, you're going to die. You don't you're have a business, yeah. yeah. And we talked about which funnels. You use the expired, you go after FISBOs, you do referrals, maybe do online, maybe you want to do direct mail. It's a little tricky because it costs some money if you want to generate leads through direct mail. But there are about 40 different ways you can generate seller leads right now. Sure. And then you can get a passive um, income by taking the extra leads that you get and find somebody else in the area that will pay for them. Not pay for them up front, but pay for them through a referral fee. Yeah, yeah. And send them the leads. I I mean, there's just, if you're in the box, the typical realtor, you're going to have trouble. You need to be outside that box and so quickly. Let's pretend I just got my real estate license. Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> and I come to you and say, hey, look, Mike, look what I got. I'm going to be an agent. Woo! Uh, and I said, Mike, I need to make $10,000 my first month. Where do I start? Learning, we covered that. Yep. Lead generation, would I start with that? Would that be your advice? That's where you have to start. Yes. Okay. Lead generation, and that is, that's a 24 hour a day thing. Mm -hmm. You are not only lead generating for expireds and FISBOs, but everywhere you go, you're talking, you're acting, you are just talking about real estate. Mm -hmm. Like my daughter is in um, competitive gymnastics. We're traveling all over the country. Everywhere I go, I'm talking about real estate. I got a lead from Tampa, Florida last year. I was down at a gymnastics meet sitting right next to a guy and we're talking and he's from St. Louis also. Mm -hmm. I listed his house. My best year, I was, I was online and I was just I don't know, just checking my stats on, on the computer and I get a a, a a referral from or on my website and a guy goes, could you list some houses for me? And I said, sure. <laughs> well, he had well over a hundred houses in another state. Hmm. Could I do it? I said, sure. And then when I was done, I'm like, how the heck am I going to do this? <laughs> so... I called another agent out in another state, uh -huh. and that didn't work, and I just kind of let it sit there. The next day, a guy from New York calls me and says he's looking to buy some property, some rental property in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. Guess what? I didn't have any, but the guy in Front, Nevada did, yeah, and we, yeah. I put them together, and next thing I know, I'm 
closing a, a very good deal. Nice. So now what, guys? What Mike is sharing? You're passionate. He, he's very passionate about real estate. He definitely enjoys the business. Now, here's the secret. You enjoy it regardless of where your income is right now. If you're passionate about it and if you enjoy it, it's contagious. You can tell Mike is really into it. He loves talking about it. He loves doing it. He is enjoying it. If you struggle with it, you got to fix something because nobody wants a miserable agent on their team. Just like you don't want to have a miserable accountant or a miserable doctor. You want someone who enjoys and they're good at what they do. Uh, you got to start lead generating. More than half of your work and time and focus and effort needs to be spent on where to find folks who want to buy or sell a house. That needs to be a focus. And you're open like a radar. You're broadcasting the signal 24-7. Now, Mike, let me ask you, what do you see as the biggest obstacle right now? What is the biggest challenge right now in the your The biggest business? challenge right now, I, I think, is to get in front of people. A lot of people have been burned. Their house was on the market here in, in in St. Louis, 47% of the houses listed last year sold. 47%, that's it. Wow. So when you're looking at it, um, you've got to get past the stigma of the people saying, no, nah, I'm not putting it back on the market. The market's bad. What do you say to that? How do you usually handle that? Well, you know what? The market is bad right now. There are a lot of homes out there that just didn't sell. But to be honest, Many of the homes were way overpriced for their condition. I'm looking at pictures of yours on the MLS, and I can't see why yours didn't sell. Your home should have been one of the first ones sold. Do you know what happened? Why it didn't sell? And then they'll either tell me, you know, I've heard this before, or they, they start giving me a reason why, a bad age, an overpriced. And I, then I go into, you know, I, well, I'm not so sure that that's necessarily the case. By what I see, this thing should have sold. Mm -hmm. Now, tell you what, I'm going to come by, drop off my business card, my resume. I don't want to list your house. I don't want to list it. I just want to drop it off because someday you might want to put the house on the market. And if you do, I would like you to have my information. And they're like, uh, I said, what's it, what's it going to hurt? five minutes, maybe even three minutes with me to get a look at your house and give you the information. You know, all I want is to get face to face with them. Yeah. I don't I don't care under any pretenses. I want to get face to face because when I get there, they're mine. They're mine. And Feel the confidence when Mike says, when I get there, they're mine. Feel that? Yeah, they you have know how important that is to, to trust yourself and be at that level where you can communicate with somebody on that way that you walk in, you know, I can, have, I can help these people. I can get this listing. How do you get that confident, Mike? What's the secret? Practice and turn downs. I, when I, years ago, I was turned down more times than I knew what to do with. Um, but a lot of it's just practice. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, role play, my wife is my, oh. You still uh, role play? You still do oh, that? Shit. Oh, yeah. All the time. Really? I'll be sitting, last night, we were sitting at... at and um, um, where did we go? Oh, the Smokehouse. It's a it's a nice restaurant down in the valley. And we went there, and I said, you know what? I had a phone call today, and the guy threw me this objection, and for some reason I was tongue tied. Hmm. But this is what I was going to tell him. And she said, I'd hang up on you. I said, what do you mean you'd hang up on? Me? This line works. You got a good coach there. <laughs> oh, let me tell you, she is critical. But. <laughs> It's great because I feel more confident and comfortable role playing with her than anybody else. The other agents are feeding me lines that really don't come up. Mm -hmm. They either want to try to trick me or they want to just play along and get off the phone. Mm -hmm. So, but my wife, whoo, she'll take me to the test. So regardless of whether you've been in the business for a year, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 37, still practice. There yes. still needs to be a time because it keeps you nimble. You know, I, I, I recently picked up guitar again. I used to play. I, I, I was pretty good at it. And it just kind of went by the wayside. I got busy, the kids, the family and everything. And recently I said, I want to get back to that. And I thought, I'm just going to pick up where I left off. Uh -uh. You start pretty much from scratch. The fingers lose touch. You know, you lose your, your abilities. But the way I'm going to get there is practice practice. Even though I have years of experience playing guitar and doing other things, 
I still practice. Mike, look at that, 37 years, selling a bunch of homes, making good money, having a good living. Still practices, what does that tell you? You must stay in good shape, like an athlete would, like an entertainer would, singers, musicians, professional football players, or any ball players. Everybody practices, you must do the same thing. And agents of caliber of Mike and everybody else who is at that level, that's what they do. That really is the secret. What else, Mike, what else would you say would be a good advice or inspiration to, to, to folks who, who are not exactly where they want to be? Well, you've just got to stay educated. You've got to keep learning. You've got to look at what's online. A lot of these things that come through, um, they're, they're freebies and you just have to read it. Um, stay up with your MLS and all the numbers and the stats and compare your stats to what's going on. Find out where you're weak. Are you weak at listing? Are you weak at selling? Just stay motivated. And you got to find ways to stay motivated. How do you do that? How do you stay so <sighs> passionate and energetic? I mean, you have some pretty grueling schedule, at least to regular <laughs> compared to regular agents. How yeah. do you do that? How do you stay so motivated, so passionate, so enthusiastic after all these years? Well, 1970, I was training, I wanted to go to the Olympics. I was training for the quarter mile. Hmm. I got run over by a car and was paralyzed from the waist down. Now, thank the Lord, it didn't stay that way. But while I was still on the body cast, my trainer and gym coach would come and they would tell me, you know, hang in there, you're gonna be able to walk again. And I'm like, when's track season start? Hmm. I'm ready <laughs> and wasn't supposed to walk. Um, I have a self-driven motivation that I have to be the best. I want to be the best. And when I am the best at something, I can be better than me. So I, I'm internally driven, but I have a lot of fun doing it. If you compete against yourself, so that if I'm competing against somebody that's way better than me, sometimes it gets uh, old hat and you're like, I can't do this. You get put down. But compete against whatever you were doing last year or the time before that i get up i get up at four in the morning and i will go to the gym for an hour hour and 15 minutes and i'll come home i will then get ready for the day to start i'll start looking through the 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 leads and and so forth what i want to do for the day then i stop crawl back in bed with my wife so it when it's time for her to get up she sees i'm there so we get up we get the kids breakfast get the kids off to school she goes off, she's the teacher, she goes off to school, and I start my day all over again. But I've got the energy from keeping the body fresh. I've already done some reading. I am ready to rock and roll. By 11 o'clock, I'm ready for lunch. Um, wherever I am, I'll stop and try to buy something healthy, but not always. And um, try to set appointments from 10 o'clock until two, you know, two or two thirty, and then I I come back to the office, kind of reorganize and start for my second day, which is after six o'clock. I usually go on one appointment. I try, or if I don't have an appointment, I'm going to try to meet up with an SOI, somebody I know, <laughs> um, and we just meet for a drink or for something that is um, you know an event that's going on around town or something. And if, I, if it's an event, I'll try to meet with two or three of them, try to get it going. Uh, thank you notes go a long way. Oh, my goodness. Send thank you notes to everybody for everything. Nobody gets thank you notes anymore. I even made a mistake one time, and I sent out 50 of them to a party. I forgot to put stamps on them. <laughs> well, that was great. They were all delivered, and um, I had to pay for the postage. And I got a lot of phone calls back. <laughs> hey, what's the idea? So... That worked out good. Try to, whatever you can do, don't get down. Stay mm -hmm. up. Um, my kid comes home. My son comes home from school. He's 10 years old. He comes home from school, 4 o'clock. What do I do? I play catch with him if I'm at home from 4 to 4.15, 4.30. He's a happy camper. Dad's a good guy. Then he goes off and plays with his friends. And I can check that box off also. Okay, done that. <laughs> now, next thing. Then I got to look at my schedule and say, oh, barino has got this thing at noon, noon St. Louis time. Oh, couldn't he plan a better time for that? I'm busy <laughs> that time. No, but 
you get what I mean. You just gotta make it fun. Hmm. Challenge yourself and have fun. Awesome, awesome. You guys, this has been what? We've talked for about, what, almost an hour. Tons of good information, Mike. Tons of good information, both inspirational, both the inner game, the psychology of being successful, and some practical tips, tools that Mike uses these days. The video tips were all, uh, outstanding, the lead generation, the dialogues, the role playing, all that. Very, very good. Anything else you want to throw at the end? Uh, you know what? I started looking at some of the marketing that, that we do. It's the listing videos. You get, we do educational things, mm -hmm. um, such as uh, seven things a buyer shouldn't do, eight things a home seller shouldn't do, staging. Um, look at community uh, uh, videos. Every so often when I go to a restaurant, I'll bring the video camera, take a real quick picture of the inside of the restaurant and talk to who's ever there. You even get a free meal out of it, usually. Hmm. Um, slide share, we do the Facebook, the LinkedIn, the Twitter. Um, QR codes, I don't find doing very much. I, I, I use those, but they don't do much for me okay. anymore. Okay. Um, I do not pay for any leads whatsoever. The have you ever used leads, any of those lead generation systems? Have you tried them? I have tried all of them, I think. Okay. And I find they're great at sucking money out of my account, but they don't put much in. Uh, I mean, boom leads, tiger leads, uh, realtor.com leads, uh, Trulia, Zillow. They don't do as much as you can do yourself. That's pretty much consistent with what I've been telling you guys, is you're much better off generating your own leads. It's cheaper, you're in control, you can scale it, you know where the leads are coming from, you can quickly adjust if something is not working, you're not putting, sending good money after bad. That, that is very consistent with what I see. Excellent. Yeah. Mike, very good. Man, this has been really, really helpful. Did you guys enjoy it? Now, if folks have some questions, would it be okay if I get in touch with you? Or are you? Oh, I know you're a busy guy, so please, guys, before we give Mike's contact information, if he's okay with that, be respectful, uh, honor the fact that this is a very busy guy that has a lot on his plate, so be cool. If you do have a question and want to reach out, you're welcome to, but just keep that in mind. You know, Mike uh, is not a full-time coach like I am, where he doesn't have the staff or the support system to, to chat with all of you, which I love and enjoy, but just keep that in mind. Anyway, Mike, go please, go ahead. Oh, give my information. Give the email, give my cell phone, uh, not the office phone, the cell phone. Okay. And um, I'll be more than happy to talk to anybody. I also am probably going to put a little plug in here that I shouldn't, but my IT guy is developing some software to help people post their ads uh, pretty automatically. Cool. And he's going to be looking for some people to try it out for free. And um, if anybody's interested, drop me an email. I'll see how many he wants to do. Probably two or three to start, and then he might want to expand it to 10, 15, Scale 20. It. Right. Scale there it are up. two more ways you can you can chat with Mike if you do have questions for him. Is he is on our private Rockstar Agents Facebook page? I see him post there frequently. He's coaching and answering questions and encouraging people and just chatting, which is great. And for those of you guys who are coming to Washington D.C. to the listing presentation live on June, is it 14 and 15 or 15 and 16th? It's the weekend of June. Mike will be here. I'm really looking forward to working with you in person, Mike. By the way, looking forward to chatting in person so you'll be ha be able to say hello grab a beer talk to him ask more questions and and pick his brain and get more more inspiration and more cool tools yeah now here's the way you negotiate yeah. you say yes i'll be there you can come and see me whenever you want to right after Barino buys me dinner <laughs> <laughs> deal you're on <laughs> awesome no i didn't mean that oh Come on. It'll be nice. If nothing else, we're going to hang out Friday night, have a beer, chat down downstairs in the hotel lobby in Hyatt Regency here in D.C. If you're still interested, I don't know if even if we have any tickets or not. I don't want to promote a program. I think we may be sold out, but I'm not so sure. Anyway, you're welcome to shoot me an email, borino at expiredplus.com. We're also going to post Mike's email. And with that, my friends, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this Rockstar interview. Mike, Excellent information, great stuff. Very much appreciate you being here and giving us the time and giving the info to everybody at the Listing University. Thank you. Thanks very much for watching. This is your coach, Borino, saying, let's go get him. Bye, everybody. I'll talk to you soon.